Absolutely. You know, um, we knew going into the game that uh, it was going to be a hard-fought ball game, and um, the uh, the team that uh, executed the best and, and laid, made the least amount of mistakes was going to the team that was going to pull it out. And unfortunately, we uh, we didn't play um, you know the the great execution type of football that we played the whole season. We had three turnovers. We were still in it to the uh, the last play of the game, but uh, unfortunately on Saturday. Uh, they were the better team, and, and they deserved to win. Well, listen, the fact that you got there, you had a great season. Um, overall, 11-2, and two, and it's funny. Uh, you lost the first game of the season, and after that, you, you turned around and won 11 in a row before the loss on Saturday. So you could, um, you could say that uh, your, your season was successful, um, in regards to your dominance in the in the SWAC, absolutely. You know, uh, go, going into the season, we set uh, three goals for the team, and uh, the goals were to uh, get in double digit wins, to to win the uh, the SWAC, and and to to uh, win the national championship. And you know, we got two out of three, like you said. We we won eleven games. We won the SWAC. Didn't lose a SWAC game. Um, and and unfortunately, we came up um, you know uh, a couple plays short. But two out of three goals, 11 wins. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're happy with the uh, with the season, and we're ready turning the page, getting ready for next year. I see. You got a good crop of um, uh, for next year. You got some seniors. Well, the main one. Let's talk about the Bati Kincaid, your quarterback, a senior. The kind of season, um, the, his four years at Grambling, uh, excellent. How do you see him in terms of performing in the NFL? So De- Devontae is an interesting one. You know, he I got to spend a lot of time with him. One of the uh, many hats I wear here at Grambling, I'm the uh, the uh, liaison with the um, NFL scouting department. And you uh-huh. know, long story short, long story short with Devontae, he he signed um, with Ole Miss out of high school. So he's from Dallas, Texas. Signed with Ole Miss. Uh-huh. Went there for two seasons. Um, you know, didn't get a bunch of playing time. Uh, mother got sick, and, and the combination of uh-huh. the playing time and mom getting sick, he was looking for for a better opportunity and for a a chance to get closer to home. So we made a big push. He had some other options, but um, you know, our success before Devonte got here with Jonathan Williams, who was an All Conference quarterback and did a lot of great things for us. Devonte kind of saw the offense we ran saw the success that he possibly could have. And when, when he came on board and, and jumped in, when he got here in uh, the, the spring going into the 16 season, the rest was really history. You know, he took, took the reins, um, tons of stats in the, in the swag. And when we went out to Arizona last year, 
uh, the first game of 2016, Devontae was the best player on the field. And, and um, you know, he's going to be an interesting one because he's athletic. He's going to test very well at pro day. He can run. He can jump. But, you know, some people are going to question his size. Is he big enough to play quarterback? And um, will he be willing to move positions? Now, I know Devontae, and, and he's, gonna, he's, he's a quarterback, and he wants to prove to everybody he is a quarterback. So uh, I know he'll test well. I know he'll impress people. But at the end of the day, it's just going to come down to do teams want him to play quarterback or are they going to try to possibly move him to uh, an athletic position, maybe a receiver or DB? Well, I'll tell you, he has the speed. Uh, the size, as you said, is, is the issue. Uh, at uh, 190, that is small for a quarterback, and especially – if he wants to play in the NFL, because we know uh, the majority of quarterbacks um, are usually around six three, six four, but and and around at least uh, two twenty, two thirty, and you're going to have to be able to with, uh, withstand the hits that you're going to get from crazy linebackers, you know. So, um, but you never know. You, you never know. He's a mobile quarterback, so he may have that ability to get out of trouble constantly. We'll, we'll see. But um, we wish him the best of luck there um, in terms of, you know, what happens um, at the uh, NFL draft. Um, let's talk about you for a moment. Uh, you are in um, your second season as um, the uh, director of football operations there. How um, – tell us um, the process that it, it took for you to get this position. Sure, sure. So um, so long story short uh, about myself, I'm uh, born and raised in New York, Rockland County, small little suburb outside of New York City, about 45 minutes um, outside of uh-huh. uh, the uh, Manhattan area. And uh, when I graduated college in 2010 from Chowan University – I knew I wanted to get into college football. I just, at the time, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be. You know, at the time, I thought it was one of those things, I'll just send a resume in and, and, and hopefully I'll get a call back. And then reality uh-huh. soon hit me. Reality soon hit me. Well, that's not the way it works. That it's a, uh, you know, it's an it's industry that's high in demand. You know, jobs could be tough to, to come by. And a lot of times, it's all about who you know. And, uh, after I graduated college, I went back to New York. I was uh, coaching high school ball and, and working part-time in a restaurant and uh, sat oh. down and told, my, told myself, if this is what I want to do, you know, you got to put your, put your all in it. And uh, so I sent my resume out and, and really pretty much a story about myself to, uh, to pretty much every school at every level that has a college football team. And one of the schools that got back to me was a startup program in the NAIA level down in uh, Naples, Florida, called Ave Maria University, and mm-hmm. they were just start they were just starting up a program. And the head coach responded and called me and told me to come on down and check it out. And really, really, the rest is history. I packed up my stuff from New York. I drove down and uh, you know hit the ground running. And, and over, I did about five five seasons there, and I did uh, wore multiple hats pretty much every year, but. It was a great experience. It, it it kind of helped build the foundation for me to get the position that I have today. And, and after my five seasons there, I saw the opening at Grambling for the uh, director of football football operations and recruiting coordinator. So uh, I thought to myself, you know, it can't hurt to apply. What's, what's the worst that can happen? You know, they, they don't call back. And believe it or not, Coach Fobbs called. And, um, you know, we set up a phone interview. Then we did a Skype interview. And, and he offered me the position. And, and – uh, this uh, just finished my second season, so it's it's been a blessing. It's been a tremendous experience. Obviously, when you win, you know everything's better when you're winning. But um, it's been a great road, and, and I'm happy to be here. I tell you though, and, and that's a blessing for you because Grambling, you're talking about a prestigious uh, black college that's been around since 1928, and um, you know the. I would say you've got the cream of the crop in terms of job uh, in the in the in, in the sports industry, and I was very impressed by that. And, and I was like, wow! And when I first saw your title, uh, director of um, football operations at Grambling, I'm like, wow, this is deep. 
I, that's why I said I got to have you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate yeah, that. I, and, you know, and Steve, to be honest with you, when, when, when I interviewed and I took the job, you know, and obviously everybody uh-huh. that knows college athletics knows about Grambling, but, but I didn't really uh-huh. know until, until I got here and I, I drove up to Louisiana and got my feet kind of on the ground. I didn't really you know, uh-huh. realize how, how rich the tradition was how loyal the fans and the supporters are, and man, it, it has been, it has been, and just the HBCU experience in general, you know, it, it's been an awesome, awesome ride, and and, and nothing but a blessing. I tell you, and uh, I tell you, your two seasons right now um, uh, on the job, um, last season, eleven and one. This year, eleven and two. So you are off to a fantastic start. And um, what I will ask you to talk about is now you also have the title of uh, recruiting coordinator. Now, in terms of recruiting, what take us through the steps. What does it take um, the steps in, in, in regards to recruiting the, I would have to say, the student athletes, um, for the football program, um, what are your specifications in terms of who gets to re, who gets to uh, play for Grambling or, or attend the school? Period. What are the sure. steps that, in your opinion? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so, so how how it works here is, you know, I have the title of the recruiting coordinator, and and really what my job is kind of um, similar to really everything else is more of behind the scenes. You know, I, I'm not I'm not a big evaluator of talent. What I do is I really assist the coaches. Our, our coaches, we split up kind of we we split up the country by states, and then uh, most importantly, we split up the, the the southwest area from Louisiana to Texas to Alabama. And we have coaches kind of all, uh-huh. all over, all over these southern states um, that that go into all these schools, and and we we have uh, you know kind of a mold of what we look for, and and obviously the number one thing for us is can you get it done in the classroom? Um, you know we we don't want anybody to come in and and kind of fall flat on their face or or not be able to get it done, and now we're back to square one. Um, what what Coach uh-huh. Bob's and our coaching staff does a does a great job of is not only are we trying to win championships, you know, we're, we're trying to build young men for when football's done that they're able to, to go out get a job and be successful employees and successful husbands. So, um, you know, football wise, um, it, it, you have to be NCAA eligible, obviously, but, but if once you get into uh-huh. school, um, you know, defensively, we, we have an attacking style. We play a three, three, five, we look for physical fast, um, you know, defenders, guys that, that are lanky in the secondary that can cover ground and, and up front, you know, we look for guys that, that can get after the quarterback at, at the FCS level, you know, you're not going to have the six, three, three thirty guys that, that Alabama and LSU have. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if you're six foot two ninety and you have that, that, that dog, uh-huh. you, you know, we're, we're not going to turn you away. So um, offensively, Offensively, obviously, everything for us is, is offensive line. That that's where the game's won. Um, you know, we look for athletic, uh, athletic big guys that can move in space and get to the next level, and 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 athletes on the outside. You know, that that one's easy because all over the South, you know, there's so many good receivers, running backs, um, you know, skilled players that uh, that we kind of uh, get get to choose from. Now it's uh, uh, you know, our success has made us more of an attractive destination so we've actually have to be more selective now and uh it's 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 a good thing to have because there's been times here where you know you might be looking for players or trying to fill spots where now you know if a player wants to transfer or a good player wants to come in we might not have room or have a scholarship for him so so it's it's a good problem to have but at the end of the day we're looking for for good players that are uh, going to play our brand of football as well as get it done in the classroom Mm. Now, in recruiting, you mentioned a lot of the schools across the country that are more on the the, the south. Do have you um, also uh, explored the north, like say East Coast, maybe mm-hmm. like um, New York or Jersey or anything um, Northern America? Do you do you uh, look for players uh, in in that direction? 
Yeah, so so how it works for us is just from the recruiting budget standpoint, um, it, it's it's much easier for the, for us to get on the ground here because everything's in driving distance between five six hours. You know, from from where we are mm-hmm. in Louisiana, Dallas is a four hour drive, Houston's a five hour drive, New Orleans is a five hour drive. So so this is kind of our bread and butter. Now, in terms of out of state. We definitely will 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 look at players, but it has to be one of those things where we're not going to make a trip out there unless we know there's a player that's really interested. So uh, we can our budget, I guess, doesn't allow us to fly out there to do the initial groundwork. It would have to be one of those things right. where where we have such a, a strong brand and we have alumni all over the place. Where we have alumni that are high school coaches in New Jersey and New York City that if they recommend somebody to us and they talk to somebody about us that, that we know is, is serious and, and a good possible fit, then we would, um, we, we would possibly explore that option. And then, um, you know, when I go home, I'll be going home for the holidays. You know, if I need to go, go follow up or, or do anything, uh, I can do that route as well. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to read uh, something. I, uh, I, this is um, in regards to uh, the – Grambling Department of Athletics. I'm going to read the mission and vision statement. And when I read this, I was very impressed. Um, the mission of the Grambling State University Department of Athletics is to graduate our student athletes and compete successfully at the highest level of NCAA Division I intercollegiate athletics while supporting the total development of our student Athlete, at student athletes and staff. Now, the vision of the Department of Athletics is to build their, build on our national reputation of winning championships, graduating student athletes, and developing leaders. The department is widely recognized for the delivery of educational and athletic related experiences. The Department of Athletics expands its brand by forging strategic corporate corporate partnerships, challenging top competition, engaging the alumni, and recruiting the best talent available. Further, the department is at a source of pride for alumni and global supporters. Is this what you guys truly stand by? Yeah, so you know, we when we have our athletic um, department retreat uh, each year going into uh, this season, you know, our athletic director put this up, and our new athletic director has done a great job, as well as our president. Um, you know, pretty much to sum it up is, you know, we want to compete at the highest level. Um, we want our brand to be successful, and we want to graduate student athletes and, and make sure that they're successful in life. And and I I know since I've been here. You know, I get stopped all the time when I walk through the airports, no matter where it is, whether it's in New York, Atlanta, Dallas, and people recognize the G. And people stop you and say, hey, is that Grambling? And, and then next thing you know, you're talking to somebody who is an alumni or who knows somebody who went there. And um, and that's, that's an awesome, awesome feeling because our alumni are very prideful and, um, you know, and they love, love, love seeing us uh, successful. And, and then to piggyback off of that, you know, uh, like I told you with our with our recruiting, you know, for us obviously win- winning is important, but but we want these guys to come in whether it's for four years or two years, we want them to leave better than when they came in. And uh, what our coaching staff does is they do a great job getting these guys prepared for life. You know, uh, we teach them how to tie a tie. Coach coach teaches them etiquette training. You know, uh, how to do things the right way, how to present yourself the right way, how to speak properly. You know, some of these guys come from all walks of life that might not have never had a father figure or might not have ever had somebody, you know, ha- show them how to do things the right way. And and our staff and our program, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in doing things the right way um, and, and winning the right way as well. And I think that that transitions to the success that we've shown and um, and helps build the brand for it to be bigger than, than just us. Now, uh, the reason why I brought that up was because in today's um, society, and especially when it comes to um, collegiate sports, you got 
students, uh, student athletes that won't hesitate to come out of college early just for the opportunity of making money in the pros. And um, and I don't ever recall Grambling to be that type of a school. Um, but um, if you have those kind of players, let's say a player that wants to come out um, as a sophomore, and um, chances are if that has happened, do those students come back their degrees? Yeah, so so just to give you an example, um, since I've been here, um, you know, my first season we had a, a young man get uh, signed with the Indianapolis Colts. It was the spring that I got here. His season just ended, mm-hmm. and his name's Chester, Chester Rogers, and right now he starts with the Indianapolis Colts. And, and he had to leave early to go train, and, and he made it with the NFL team, and, and uh, he's in his second year now. And after that first NFL season started, he came back to to, uh-huh. to to graduate. He wanted to walk, you know, and and uh, I know our young man that's out in Arizona right now with the Cardinals, Chad Williams. Um, you know, when he left uh-huh. here, he said the same thing. A lot of these guys, when they leave here, they're so close to graduating, and not everybody has the opportunity to play at the next level. But but the guys who do leave early to play at the next level, you know, a lot of them do uh-huh. talk about coming back. You know, they're so close. They want that degree. They want it to, to be finished because, you know, they're smart enough to know that football is not going to last forever, and, and that degree is what's right. going to help you get that next job. Now, we've had, um, the, in the history of Grambling, we've had some NFL Hall of Famers like Willie Brown, Buck Buchanan, Willie Davis, and um, – there's several others. Um, well, Doug Williams, obviously, was um, the coach, came back to coach. Um, who's the other one I have here? Well, those, those three in, in, in general, no, those four in general, um, have any of those, like, say, um, Willie Brown, Willie Davis, has any of those – guys come back to the school to lend any kind of advice to, uh, to give support to the school? Um, you know, I, I think all of them have, uh, you know, in certain ways. I, I know Doug Williams, we, we played in Atlanta this past weekend in, in the Falcons' new stadium, and Doug Williams was on the sideline, you know, and, and I, I think Grambling still means so much to him that, you know, when we are at the playing at those big venues and it's, uh, you know, easy for him to get in and out, and obviously he, he's really busy with what he's doing with the uh, the Redskins, you know, I have seen him uh-huh. on our sideline. I saw him at the Bayou Classic last year. So, so um, you know, Doug Williams is the youngest one, so, so I think it's easiest for him. Um, the, you know, the other ones that are in the Hall of Fame, the, the names get mentioned a whole uh-huh. lot. I, I think we're where they are, uh, you know, in California – and um, you know, I think it's tougher for them to to get out here as much. But but trust me, uh-huh. the, the the tradition and the uh, the legacy runs deep because they're talked about a whole lot around here. We have pictures of them up in our facility. We have museum on campus with uh you know with, with pictures um, of them in there. So Doug Williams is the one that you see around the most because he, he he's the youngest and the most recent. But the other ones are, are talked about a whole lot. Well, I think speaking of Doug Williams, who uh, is a legend in uh, Grambling and uh, accomplished something in the NFL uh, that uh, will always be his distinction, the first African-American uh, quarterback in the NFL to not only uh, to play in the Super Bowl, but to win it uh, with the Redskins. Um had a very uh, had an awesome uh, coaching career. Coached for five years uh, with Grambling, and impressive records of ten and two, eleven and zero, eleven and two, nine and three, and eight and four. Um, what uh, in terms of um, what kind of the inspiration that this man has meant to the school, um, and as um, do a lot of times. When coaches um, uh, after Doug um, talk to their players, um, how much um, do they 
they mention Doug Williams as an example of what leadership is all about and um, what inspiration he was to the school. Yeah, you know, you know, he, he's another one in our building. You know, we have pictures of him and Coach Robinson together in the hallways. We have pictures of him in our museum holding up the Super Bowl trophy. Uh-huh. So, so you know, I, I think what it does is when these young men come in from wherever they're coming from, from, you know, guys who might not have thought they had a shot to, to really make it or possibly even go to college, I think it honestly gives them gives them hope when they see somebody like Doug can come to Grambling, get in the NFL, uh, win the Super Bowl, be the first African American quarterback. You know, I, I think it gives gives them hope. And, and and to be honest with you, the the Grambling tradition and the history is so deep. We we don't really talk about it a whole much because when the guys come in here after their recruiting visits and they sign with us, you know that they, they know they know what they're getting themselves into. Our our quarterback Devontae Kincaid, you know, he gets asked a whole lot. What's it like to follow in those footsteps? What's it like to to, to, to play like in a program like this and all our seniors, you know, they all say the same stuff that, that this is bigger than them, you know, that they're playing this and they play hard for the people that built the program and, and for the shoulders that's, that they're standing on. So that goes way back to, to early in the day when, when coach Robinson got this thing rolling and obviously it, it went through a couple of coaches after that, but, but, um, you know, Coach Fobbs, our head coach now, uh, being an, uh, an alumni from Gramlin, you know, he takes a lot of pride in that as well. So so we don't have to talk about it a whole lot. The guys know the history. They, they see it on campus. They see, um, you know, if you watch the Super Bowl last year and, and they did the honoring all the HBCU guys in the Hall of Fame, I mean, the, the I right. felt like Gram, Grambling was getting repeated every other person. So, so um, yeah, you know, that's the, true. That is true. It, it's 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 an awesome awesome place um for these guys to come to know that that life is bigger than wherever they came from and that's really the 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 main objective that we want to make sure they understand when they get here now um speaking of um coach Fobbs, uh very successful at this point he took over the position in uh 2015 his um first three uh seasons with the the school um Nine and three, eleven and one, and this year eleven and two. Um, describe Coach Fobbs as a coach and as um, the leader uh, of this uh, program. Sure. So, so you know, first I'll give you my aspect of him. Uh, as since I've been here, my a uh, little over two years, you know, I couldn't ask for a better person to work for. You know, he is he is a humble guy. He he is a hard worker. He's a family man. Um, he, he's a big believer in his faith, and he's not afraid to to let anybody know that. And you know, the most important thing, and I think it's genuine, is he loves all the guys in the program. You know, even the seniors that have left and 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 you know will leave this year. You know, uh, he, he cares about all his guys. He tells them after um, you know every practice, he tells them you know how much he loves them, and 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 uh, and and the guys believe it. You know, you can feel it. So. Uh, He's a great guy to work for. The players play hard for him because they know that he cares about them. And, um, you know, when he took the program over, uh, the the program was in a rough spot. And, and he wasn't shy uh-huh. about it, and, and he wasn't scared about it. And, and, and he, he took it and put a great staff together and hit the ground running, and, and he's built it year by year. And, um, you know, like you said, 7-5, and 9-3, and three, last year 11-1, and one, and this year 11-2, and two, it's it's – it's uh, exciting the direction, you know, that, that we're going in because, um, you know, the groundwork's laid and, and, and Coach Fobbs is a big guy about consistency. It's not about just getting there. You know, he tells the guys every day uh-huh. it's, about, it's about keeping it there. And, and, you know, he played for Coach Robinson back in the day, and that's the way Coach Robinson was. You know, he, it wasn't okay to every couple of years to have a great season. You know, Grambling's going to be in the mix every year, and, and, and our guys – on the team are already talking about the feeling of losing this game on Saturday and, and remember what this feels like because next year when we get back here, we're not going to let it happen again. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so, you know, he, again, he's just a, he's a great guy to work for. The players buy in. You know, it's, I think it's easy f- to buy in and to work hard for somebody when you know they care about you and you can trust them. And, and he does a great job. He has the player's best interest at heart. Like I said, they know it's bigger than football because, you know, he helps them grow and develop as young men. 
so when they leave here, they're successful uh-huh. husbands, husbands, fathers, and workers. So uh, it, it's been it's been great to watch. It's been great to to uh, to work under him, and it's been great to watch these guys develop and and leave here as better people. Oh, uh, you mentioned um, Eddie Robinson. Let's talk about him, uh, the man that pretty much um, is for putting Grambling State on the map when it comes to collegiate uh, sports, um, football. From what you know of him, um, what is your overall, you know, what is your impression of uh, the late Eddie Robinson as a coach, leader? I look at him as the African-American version of uh, Vince Lombardi. I guess that's the best way to describe him. Uh, his leadership, his the determination and his will to succeed, and what he installed in uh, the players, the Hall of Famers that played for him. Um, what is your uh, what is your description of Eddie Robinson? Yeah, so so you know. Obviously, I, I've never got to meet Coach Robinson. Um, I, I only Uh-oh. got to learn about him when I got here. And, um, you know, we have the museum. We have a museum on campus, the Eddie Robinson Museum, and we make sure that every recruiter, every important person that comes on campus, we bring them through there. Because, you know, when you think of Grambling State and Grambling State football, you think of Coach Eddie Robinson. And, um, you know, all I can really go off of is, and it's actually a blessing, because we have two of our coaches – on staff, really three of our coaches on staff that played under Coach mm-hmm. Rob. You know, our our head coach, Coach Fobbs, our quarterback coach, um, mm-hmm. Coach Nord, our Coach Nord. He played with Coach Fobbs, and he was part of that game mm-hmm. um, back when Steve McNair played for Alcorn State. And um, right. And our our running backs coach, Coach Fobbs Senior. You know, and and I just take it all in and listen to the stories and listen to to you know how how great of a person he was and how how he ran the program. And honestly, again, I'm only going off of what people say, but, but there are some, some people around here that were here when Coach Robinson was around, and they say that, that Coach mm-hmm. Fobbs is, is the closest thing to what they saw in uh, Coach Robinson. And, and I, think, I think part of that reason is, is because Coach Fobbs played under him for four years, and he saw how he ran the program. He saw the relationships he had with his players. He saw his interaction in the community. And um, – you know, I, he's talked about so highly around here, and um, a lot of people don't know this either, but his great-grandson, who played at Notre Dame, he's our uh, sec- one of our secondary coaches right now as well. So, so uh, you know, the bloodline runs deep in Grambling between players and family members, and, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's another one of those things where it's a blessing to, to be at a place to have somebody come through here and to, to lay the foundation and build the program to where it is now because – you know, again, in college football, he's up there with the Bear Bryants, you know, uh, of college football. And, and that's how much he meant to, um, you know, not only uh, Grambling, not only to HBCU football, but to college football in general. Yes, yes. The thing that um, bothers me is the fact that during his time um, in coaching, um, and his name rarely gets mentioned among some of the great uh, college uh, coaches of all time. And, um, and a lot of times it, it isn't until Grambling plays in the, uh, these, these bowl games like uh, the Celebration Bowl and everything where all of a sudden now you recognize uh, Eddie Robinson. And I, I, I get angry because his name should be mentioned right up at the top with some of the, with the Bear Bryants and uh, you know uh, coaches, the great coaches like that. Um, how do you feel about that? You know, in terms of um, you know, especially the history of Grambling State. Uh, what bothers me is you talk about Ohio State, you talk about Alabama, uh, you talk about Michigan, UCLA, USC, Clemson, but. Rarely um, do we hear about uh, the great tradition, the great program, the football program of Grambling State. Um, why do you think, Why do you feel it's that? 
you know, you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, you ask some people, and I guess some people are biased and some people feel different ways, but, but you know, I hear tons of people when they mention the, the top coaches of all time, you know, Coach Robinson's always up there. And then, and then other people, you know, don't have him up there at all. So, um, you know, you know, it could be a, a variety of different things. Obviously, some people don't like to categorize now what's considered the FCS level, which, um, you know, back in the day, if you look at HBCUs in general, you know, they were bigger than Ohio State and those schools now. When you have Walter Payton and other great players and coaches playing at, at, at these great institutions, um, you uh-huh. know, it, it just, it's just one of those things where I, I think over time um, – you know, when, when more money started going into to bigger universities, they're they're the ones who started getting the shine, if you know what I mean. And and we take a lot of pride here at Grambling. You know, we want to go out to Arizona, and, and we want people on the West Coast to know what Grambling State football is all about. And when we left Arizona last year, I promise you, people in Arizona know who Grambling football is now who never knew about it. So, um you know, I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm a big believer in whether you're a college football fan at all and know n- much about it or don't know anything about it. When, when you talk about the, the greats to ever come through and, and the greatest to coach and to, to have a legacy, you know, Co- Coach Robinson's up there. Like I said, we, we have a museum on campus. Um, you know, the, this guy, Coach Robinson, was great friends with George Steinbrunner uh, of the Yankees. You know, I found out so much more when I got here that, that the Yankees used to come here to, to practice, you know, at the end of spring training. That's how close um, George Steinbrenner was with Coach Robinson. And, and, and then the Yankees, in return, would go play in Yankee Stadium every year in a, bowl, in a, in a game, you know. And it's, it's, yes, it's just one of, it's one of those things where um, as time passes, you know, I, I feel like it, it could be easy to, to forget the name and, and for a lot of people not to – to think about it all the time, but what we do here, and, and I think what Coach Fobbs has done a great job, is, you know, we're, we're building the program back up to the way it was, and and I promise you, when Coach Fobbs gets gets uh, praised and he gets thanked and 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 all that stuff, you know, he always mentions Coach Robinson because this thing was built on Coach Robinson. It's bigger than us, and um, you know, and everybody here that works here takes a lot of pride mm-hmm. in uh, holding it to mm-hmm. to that standard that Coach Rob built. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about the SWAC conference. Um, this year, um, Alcorn um, State won the East. You guys won the West. But from what I have seen over the last few years, it's just maybe a small handful of schools um, perform well uh, in the conference. Now, Alcorn State is usually up there. And you guys are always up there, and Southern. But the rest of the the rest of the schools in the SWAC seems like year after year uh, are mediocre. What, in your opinion, can be done to try to improve the strength of the SWAC conference? You, you know. Uh... I think a lot of it being here and being able to go to all these schools and play at their places and then obviously have our games here, you know, it's tough. It's tough to, how do I, what's the best way to say it? You know, it's tough, it's tough to, to put, I guess, as much money into facilities and into recruiting and into budgets and then ask them to go out there and be successful, you know, and, and we're not, we're not much, different than everybody else. Now we work extremely hard and we have a great legacy and tradition to help us with, with those efforts. But, but, you know, I, I think it's HBCUs and, and state schools in general, you know, they kind of get looked upon as if, um, you know, uh, money doesn't have to be poured into them, you know, and, and, and that's, that's tough because, because if you look at some of these other schools in the States, other state schools, you know, they have the funding, they have the facilities, they have the budgets, and they're able to do a lot more with it. And, and I give all the coaches and the administrators in the SWAC conference tons of credit because, because you know, it, it, there's some great coaches in this conference that don't get near the credit they deserve. And um, the fact that they're uh-huh. able to, to do what they do with the limited resources, you know, is, is really, really impressive. Mm, so, so basically you're saying is a lot of times it's all about the, the funding, which will allow you to really um, to recruit the way you would like, because um, 
Yeah, because as I said, I see a lot of these uh, a lot of these schools um, overall. Like for instance, the, the overall one of the lowest records in the in the East. Alcorn's the only school uh, with a winning record, and they're only two games. They're only two games over five hundred. Um, the West, where you guys are, seems to be a little more tougher um, with Southern and Prairie View A and M. We're the only um, schools with winning records in that conference. And mm-hmm. a lot of times when I looked at the conferences, um, even in the um, the MEAC, it's the same The same schools um, basically have the same results. And I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy um, in terms of um, why, it is, uh, why are these programs – Still um, performing lackluster. Now in the MEAC, uh, okay, North Carolina A&T won it. Uh, they were 12 and 0 uh, this year. Um, their conference um, had some surprises this year. Howard, seven and four, and Howard over the last few years has been was always near the bottom. Uh, Bethune Cookman had another good year this year. North Carolina Central. Um, seven and four. Hampton was a surprise this year at six mm-hmm. and five. They're usually down in the bottom too. So there are certain schools I see, even in the MEAC, um, that have improved, but not all of them. And um, I, I, as you said, it could be a, it's a matter of um, funding, and they're probably their recruiting staff as well. Um, so. But, um, you know, as we move forward, um, how do you see um, the future of both either the MEAC and the SWAC conferences you know, as we move forward in terms of improving um, the schools academically and um, in terms of uh, athletically as well? How do, uh, how do you see the direction of these conferences? You know, I, I think it all starts from the top. And, and, again, since I got to Grambling State, you know, I can only speak from my experience here. Um, you know, I think it all starts with the president. You know, if if you have the right president in place uh-huh. that supports winning and, and wants wants your teams to be successful, you know, <laughs> since we got here and since Coach Fobbs took the program over and we were able to go on the runs that we've been on, um, uh-huh. You know, enro- enrollments increased. Applications are higher. You know, more money is coming uh-huh. into the university. More alumni are donating, and and, and I think it ha- you have to have a president that that's got the ambition and's got the drive. And and you know, he's he came in and kind of shook the house up a little bit and got rid of some people and brought some new people in. And and we hired a new athletic uh-huh. director, and we have a whole bunch of new administrators in the athletic department. We have new provosts and academics, and and a lot of people. Um, you know, and, and at Grambling, and I'm sure it's everywhere, is some people are afraid of change. You know, they don't like change. They like things to be the same old way they were, where in reality, is, the re- reality is, is sometimes if you don't change, you're going to get passed by really fast. And, um, you know, our president's done a great job of getting on board and, and, and using our success to, to help generate, you know, new things for the university, you know, and, um, and, and the conference as well. Um, speaking for the uh, Southwestern Athletic Conference, um, you know, this was the last year of the uh, the SWAC championship, and some people were all, you know, bothered by it, where in reality of it, I can just speak for Grambling. For us, I think it's the best thing because, um, you know, we played the Bayou Classic Thanksgiving weekend, and then the following uh-huh. weekend we'd go, we'd go to Houston to play in the SWAC championship, and then the next game uh-huh. for us was in Atlanta. So you have three – three major venues, big cities, expensive tickets, a lot of travel for us three games in a row at the end of the season. And and that's tough for anybody. You know, that that's a lot of money. You're asking your fans to to do a whole lot and um and and then I don't think the conference I think the conference was spending too much money for us to go out to Houston and and to 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 use the venue where the Texans play and the hotels and the travel. I don't think it was it was cost efficient. You know, I think we were spending too much money and we weren't profiting. Where I think we're going to the uh, the same thing that the MEAC's doing now, where you know 
it's uh-huh. going to be the best the best team at the end of the 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 ten game schedule is going to be your conference winner, which which I think um, you know some people are upset about because it takes a game away and it takes the conference championship away. But if you're spending, if you're uh-huh. saving money, if you're saving money, and, and you're still giving the best team the opportunity to represent the team in the celebration bowl, you know, I'm I'm all for it. I think it's a win-win. So, um, you know, again, I I think it goes to the top. I think it's a leadership. It's people who have to have a vision and to jump on board and, and to make sure that you know they know that uh, winning athletic teams is going to help help uh, drive and help keep a university rolling because. Since I've been here, it's been nothing but improvement all across the university, um, you know, each year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one question I do want to ask in, in regards to, like, every year, well, it used to be every year, the Whitney Emory Young Classic used to be played up in Jersey um, at uh, used to be Giant Stadium, then it became uh, MetLife Stadium, uh, sponsored by the New York Urban League. We haven't had that game um, uh, within the last two, three years. Um, And when we've had it, the attendance has been very low. I mean, to the point where, um, I had mentioned this before, there'd be more people uh, in the parking lot, um, you know, with with their grills out and vendors out there than there are in the stadium. In your opinion, what is the problem um, in terms of that classic? And I always look forward to it because I think it is great that something you know, like that, especially on the beginning of the uh, college season. Uh, what what is it about that program you know, that uh, that is now we haven't had it in like three years, and uh, when we did have it, uh, the attendance has been very low. Why do you uh, – what is your opinion on why is that? You know, again, I'm only going off of my experience here. And um, if I had to, 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 to give my opinion on that one, I think it, it's all about the teams that are playing in it. You know, um, uh, you know, for us, for us, we play in the State Fair Classic every year and then the Bayou Classic. And in both uh-huh. of those games, both of those games, we have over uh-huh. 50,000 people, you know, in them every year. Now – the um, you know the one up in New York. I don't know if the teams change, and, and I don't know the time of year and the weather and whatnot. But um, you know, right. I'll give the promote the promoters for the uh, State Fair Classic and the Bayou Classic a lot of credit because both of those places are jam packed, and 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 obviously it's the South. It's probably warmer. Weather has a lot to do with it. But um, you know. Again, since I've been here, us in Prairie View have, have both been successful. Same thing with Southern. Now, if you put two teams in that game that aren't successful, you know, I, I can speak about Grambling. I promise you, five, six years ago when Grambling wasn't winning, attendance wasn't good, you know. People weren't going uh-huh. to the game. So so I think it's all about having the right teams in there. If you change them, you know, you, know, you want to make sure you're putting the right teams in there. And then um, if it's the same teams every year, you know, well, every couple of years, uh-huh. if, if a team's not too good, attendance might be down a little bit. So, um, again, I just go off of my experience here, the Bayou Classic, the State Fair Classic, even the <laughs> Chicago Classic this year. You know, we've been winning. Uh-huh. We've been successful. We have a great brand like we spoke about. So our fans show out. You know, I saw I saw something today on Twitter that out of FCS football, Grambling had three of the top ten crowds between the Bayou Classic the State Fair Classic and the Celebration Bowl, we had three of the top ten. So, um, you know, again, I, I promise you, six, seven years ago when things weren't looking too good around here, attendance wasn't very high. So, mm. Now, I had heard from the last uh, Whitney uh, Young Classic that I went to and I covered, and I, I asked someone, uh, I forgot which school, I know Morgan State was one of the schools, and I forgot who the other one, I think either was Southern or one of the schools, but I asked this young lady that worked with one of the schools, I said, can you tell me the reason, there could be a possible reason for such low attendance? And she said something that kind of shocked me. She said, well, if the schools, if, if, if the school is not involved in the, that particular game, they are really not going to support the schools that are in it, and that stunned me. So I'm like, really? Talking about other other teams um, in the conference? 
Right. If they're not involved in the school in, in the in, in the event, if they're not the, one of the teams picked to play, they're not going to support the other school, the, the two schools that are in it. And yeah. I was stunned by that. And what is your opinion of that? You know, I, it, it's one of those things where, um, you know, again, being here at Grambling, you know, people on the swag love to talk smack. And, and um, you know, everybody supports uh-huh. their team, the, the Jackson State fans, the Southern fans, the state, the Prairie View fans. Everybody all year is going to support uh-huh. their team and talk smack. But, you know, the one thing I have noticed here is, you know, when tragedy strikes a campus, you know, those – Fans and those universities are the first ones to open up arms and and see how they can help. So uh, I know the SWAC loyalty and the SWAC love is real. Now it's competitive. Um, the rivalries are strong. Uh-huh. The fans, the, the fans, um, um, you know, they can be harsh at times, but at the end of the day, they want what's best for their university. Um, you know, when we went to to Atlanta and even when we went to Chicago, uh-huh. you know. The HBCUs in the community, you know, in Atlanta, we, we, there was tons of them. You know, we ate lunch one night on the campus of Clark Atlanta, uh, dinner on the campus of Clark Atlanta. And, and I know, um, you know, there was other, the other local universities, they were doing stuff to, to be involved. Because I think when you get to those classics and, and you're on a big stage, possibly on TV, possibly a lot of attention, I think that's the time for the HBCU community to show out. You know, I mean, that's your, the time for attendance to be up and the tailgates to be to to be the best because you want to put that image out there of what HBCU football is, you know, uh, really about. So, um, you know, I, I know the fans, you know, the Southern fans, um, you know, they don't want to see us do do good most of the time. But but I promise you, um, you know, I talked to tons of people in the SWAC that um, support their own teams, you know, that that wished us good luck, that told us you know, a great game. So, um, you know, I, I think, I think the love is there. I, I think it's a, a hugely competitive sport where fans are really, really loyal and want their schools to take us down. But at the end of the day, I think it's about all about making sure SWAC and HBCU schools in general are all headed in the right direction and uh-huh. not taking steps back. Uh, well, I hope so. Because it, 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 that was stunning to me when I heard that, that statement and it's like, wow, you know, um, this is, uh, you know, with, um, there's only two uh, black conferences in all of uh, NCAA Division I uh, uh, sports. And um, you would think that there should, uh, there should be a level of support amongst the schools. Yes, you have a level of competition. That's always going to be there. That's that's beauty of sports anyway. But to support your, your schools, period. Yeah. You know, I think that's 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 the thing to me that I feel that is uh, most important. Um, how do you see? What do you see in the future of black college sports, uh, whether it be football? Uh, in basketball, where do you see the direction um, of black college sports? Um, do you see it heading in the right direction at this point, or uh, uh, how do you see it? I, I do. You know, I think I think at, at, at any league at any level, people can point out the flaws. You know, people can talk about basketball teams going to play money games and not having a home game for for two months. People can talk about football teams. You know, you know, traveling too much, and, or or not doing this, not doing that. But, but I I think the good outweighs the bad. And and when I look at teams in our conference, um, you know, and being able to travel around and play MEAC schools the last couple of years as well, I I think it is they are headed in the right direction. I think we are headed in the right direction. I think, I think at the end of the day, like I said, it, it all comes from the top. I think we have to have conference commissioners that are continuing to to get us games on ESPN, ESPNU, because I think promoting the brand of football um, is huge as well as basketball. Um, you know, I, I, I think the players that leave here and go play in the NFL are great ambassadors for us because if you look at the young man uh-huh. that's playing um, with the Chicago Bears right now, you know, he, he's, he's playing and he's playing well. And, and then we, we have two receivers right now playing um, for the Colts and the Cardinals. And and um, you know we're gonna have a couple more that make it this year. So, so I think as long as 
the good keeps outweighing the bad. I think the celebration ball is huge. I think, um, you know, uh-huh. I, I, I think it's headed in the right direction. I, I think, obviously, we have to continue to get support. We have to continue to, to get money um, funded into the universities to keep it going because, because, you know, if you want us to compete and you want other schools to compete and be able to, to recruit and, uh-huh. and be able to, to hold everything at a high level, well, we have to have the same resources as those other schools. And, and again, I know it's not going to be perfect, but, but you, have, you have to give, give something to get something, you know. And, and um, again, I, I've had nothing but a blessing, um, a great experience since I've been here. And, and I think black college football and HBCU sports in general are headed in the right direction as long as the support and the exposure continues to head in the right direction. Okay. Um, one of the last questions I want to ask you, um, and I thank you very much for uh, coming on the show. Um, the, you know your seniors are graduating, and uh, they will be going off, you know, like say um, um, your quarterback, um, uh, Kincaid, he, uh, hopefully he'll have a good future in the NFL. And, but um, who do you see uh, coming back for uh, next season? Who do you see uh, as uh, the player or players that's going to be a uh, breakout performance, in your opinion, in, in uh, keeping with the tra- tradition of uh, winning Grambling football? Um, you know, it, it, one of those things. I, I think it's time, uh, time still to be determined. Um, you know, exactly. We got to see how recruiting shakes out, and we got to see if we, if we get a transfer or two that could have a big impact right away, like Kincaid did. Um, but, but right uh-huh. now, you know, we're, we're a young team. Uh, we we lost some key players, some key seniors. But um, you know, offensive line wise, we lost one player. Everybody's coming back. We didn't lose one receiver. All our receivers are underclassmen. So I think we're going to have a strong receiving core next year. Um, up front, we didn't lose anybody on our D-line. And um, we had a young man transfer in from Mississippi State last year who missed the first four games this year and started his first game in the State Fair Classic. I think he's got a chance next year to be, the, to be if not, one of the best players in the SWAC and, um, and our linebackers as well. We lost one linebacker. We have two two all-conference linebackers coming back. So, there's some holes to fill. Obviously, we need to we need to figure out the quarterback position, and uh, we we have to uh-huh. um, we got to fill some holes in our secondary because we lost about four seniors back there. But but I think uh-huh. overall we have a lot of depth at a lot of positions. We're young at a lot of positions, and but we also have a lot of players that got valuable experience this year. So um, I, I, I'm. I think we're going to be right back to where we were, you know, this year. I think we're going to we're going to compete. There's going to be some players that are going to blossom that that people weren't expecting, but um, you know, right now I can't give you that one person just because across the board it was kind of consistent everywhere. We were young and um uh you know, we got to see how recruiting and and everything shakes out. Okay. Uh last question, you as a recruiter, um you go to a future prospect, you go to their home, and you meet with the parents and everything. What is your selling point in uh, in convincing their son to come to Grambling State? What are your selling points? You know, again, I'm going to piggyback off of my head coach here because he's such a great person and a great recruiter that – you know, I listen to what he says, and I, I think a lot of times in recruiting, people get caught up in the hype. You know, they end up at the, the, the place that has all the great facilities and the great field and the great scoreboard, and, and they sell you all the bells and whistles, but when you get there, you just become a person. You know, you're just another person kind of caught up in, you know, in the, uh, the, the herd. And um, I, I think what we do a great job here is you know we're not going to sell you on that now we don't have awful stuff but what we're going to sell you on is our program uh, i would say a program where you're going to come in and you're going to feel special you're going to form a brotherhood with a bunch of other guys you're going to have a coaching staff that cares about you and that's going to continue to develop you um not only on the field but off the field because we're going to push you and and we're going to make sure that you're becoming a better person because when you leave here after you win championships at grambling 
whether you're going to the NFL or to, to the real world to work, we're going to make sure that we get you to leave here as a better person. So, um, again, I, I speak off of what I've seen, and I hear players like Kincaid that were at Ole Miss that, that come to Grambling and, and just say, you know, the, the, the family love is, is unlike anything he's ever felt. So um, I was able to experience it when I got here, and I wasn't sure what to, to, to expect. But, but, you know, we have a great group of uh, players that buy in and want to be successful, and we have a great coaching staff that does a tremendous job, um, you know, winning football games but also developing young men on and off the field. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that if you come be a part of it, you're going to be a part of tradition, be a part of a great legacy, and, and help um, help continue this thing go, uh, keep heading in the right direction. All right. Uh, the main thing is, in my opinion, is that you get, um, you get your four years of education and you graduate. That is the yes, most sir. important thing because – when you go to the NFL, uh, you want to continue in sports. Sports, they have to understand, is a physical thing. And your career can end at any time. And you need that degree to move on in life. And that's the main thing. That's the most important thing. Um, Mike, I truly enjoyed this. I thank you very much for uh, coming on the show. Um, you are welcome on Sports Tuesday anytime. Uh, continued success in your career there as uh, director of, uh, of football operations. I think you're doing a fine job, and uh, the school is very grateful to have you. And uh, I know under your direction, uh, the school will continue to um, thrive successfully in Division One uh, football and continued success with uh, the program. And uh, that's it. Um, uh, take care. Have a great holiday. And um, God bless. I, I appreciate it, Steve. I, thank you for the time um, on uh, having me on, and, and uh, happy holidays to you and yours as well. All right. You take care and God bless. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Source Nation, that was Mike Armstrong, the Director of Football Operations of Grambling State University. Team coming off a very successful 11-2 season. Unfortunately, they lost the Celebration Bowl this past uh, Saturday to uh, North Carolina A&T. A uh, very hard-fought game. But as you heard from uh, uh, Mike, uh, the school is uh, heading in the right direction. A long history of success at the school, and uh, it can only get better. And I'll just give you some facts. Um, all all time, the football program, which uh, started in 1928, overall a 686 winning percentage, 534 wins, 239 losses, 18 ties. Okay, in bowl appearances, they're 19 and 8, which is a 704 winning percentage. Okay, uh, 15 black college football national championships. Okay, um, this is a rich history. Um, Eddie Robinson, one of the, uh, the original coaches, original coach of um, uh, Grambling, and his tremendous record. Um, this is a rich, this is a school, a rich history, not just uh, in athletics, but academics. Uh, uh, the um, Hall of Famers that have come, the NFL Hall of Famers that have come out of Grambling, and we're talking um, Buck Buchanan, okay, um, Willie Brown, Willie Davis, Charlie Joyner, okay. Um, the uh, College Football Hall of Fame members, again, Buck Buchanan, Gary Big Hands Johnson, Eddie Robinson, the coach, Doug Williams, Paul Tank Younger, okay. Doug Williams has the distinction of being the first African-American quarterback uh, to not only start um, 
a Super Bowl, but to win it. Okay, um, this is the history, rich history of Grambling State, and it can only get better uh, for um, this school. And um, basically, their student athletes graduate. They've gone on to not even just um, if it's not an NFL career. They've gone on to have great careers outside of sports and outside of football. And that's what the the rich history of Grambling State University is all about. And uh, Mike Armstrong, and hearing him, uh, guys, hear him uh, this evening. He um, he's got that school in the right direction in terms of recruiting and what it takes um, and and how they recruit and what they expect from their student athletes. Um, it's all about, um, uh, to me, it's all about the academics. You, can, you, you will always have the talent to play the sport, whether it be basketball, football, but it's all about graduating and pursuing life after, after football, because, after sports anyway, because sports, to make a living at sports, you have to be blessed to avoid major injuries. And, of course, after all, sports is a physical way to make a living. And your season could end in preseason. Okay, um, so it can happen, but the thing is, it's always about graduating, getting that degree, and going on and to pursue your career um, outside of sports. You know, developing as as a man. Okay, uh, my thing is also. You know, for, in, in regards to black college sports, please uh, support your college. Black colleges have to support one another. You know, I'm talking the MEAC and the SWAC. I mean, after all, you guys are all you've got, okay? You have to support. We're not talking about the competition. The competition is always going to be there. Um, in sports, athletically. But we're talking about supporting the school in your conference. I mean, this whole thing that I heard about um, is, is in terms of the Whitney and the Young Classic. Oh, if the school, if your school is not involved, you don't feel the need to support the schools that are in it? Come on. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. We have to stop that nonsense. To support the schools, help in recruiting get people to come to your schools, because that's the only way your schools will be able to survive. Okay, you've got to have that support. You know, it, it's nonsense, but hopefully, uh, you know, things will change. Um, so that is it. You know. Uh, as again, I want to thank uh, Mike Armstrong for coming on, and uh, we'll definitely talk down the road. And the continued success um, with the program, with the football program, and um, you know, uh, he's you know he's a, in an excellent position there. He came to the right school, and um, can tell by talking to him that. Uh, the school has not will not lose a beat in their continued success to to strive, both collectively, uh, athletically, and academically. Okay, well that's it for me, and um, wishing everybody good holidays. Okay, hope uh, Santa is good to you. You know, and uh, you know. Uh, we'll talk um, down the road. Wish you guys happy New Year and uh, oh, and a very profitable, uh, successful 2018. Okay, so that is it. And um, as um, until next time, as I always say, 
Be good and be safe. Take care, everybody. Yo